Hey, it's Jake Mace. In this series, we'll be showing you guys what to do if your opponent is empty hand and you have the knives. My friend Jim is good enough to play the opponent in this video. And I have two knives to show you. I have the steel one, which is custom made for me. And I have the practice knife. I would suggest using the practice knife for this training because if you make a mistake, your opponent goes home bleeding and in training, he might be your friend. So we're gonna use the training knife today so that we leave this training session safe. I have six techniques to show you that I think are pretty common on the street. For the first couple, the knife's in the chambered position. And your opponent might be throwing a haymaker right toward your head, coming right across trying to knock you out with that headshot, headhunter. So I'm gonna use my left hand to guard against the haymaker while the knife comes over the top like I just did. Let's do that a little bit slower so you guys can see it slower. Haymaker comes in, block with this hand, immediately, almost simultaneously, the knife comes over the top and cuts right behind where the tricep meets the joint. Come right across there, and the goal is to walk away. Let's do it again. Block in here, over the top, and cut back. Remember, the power of the knife is in the thrusting, but it's more so in the slashing. So watch the cadence and the rhythm of this one. One, two, again, one, two. If you have your partner, Try to do about a thousand of these until this action is second nature to you. Once you've got that, pull back and take off out of there. Two more times. Take it, cut back, and leave. Last one. Take it, slash, get out of there. Let's do it once in full speed. The first technique you just saw involved slashing from outside of your opponent's attack. This one will involve slashing from inside your opponent's attack. So the same attack for the opponent, but this time I block and stick the knife on the inside where his bicep meets the joint of the arm. And the same finish. Block it, knife is there, slash upward, and get yourself out of there. Punch comes in, I place the knife against the bicep. Again, block and bicep. Can you guys see that? Again. Block and bicep. Now, in a pressure situation, we get a little more sloppy. We have to train this stuff thousands of times so that when it counts, it's second nature. Just like a pro athlete may hit millions of golf balls or millions of baseballs or throw millions of passes before they can do it in the game, we have to treat ourselves the same way. So when that punch comes in, stick it right there. If we're under pressure, we wanna make sure that we get it somewhere on the bicep. I would prefer to have it right here at the base but I recognize that if I'm stressed out, I may not be that accurate. So anywhere on the bicep is a great target. Block it, slash up, get out of it. Here's a note if you wanna gain mastery over these first two moves. Number one, when they go for that punch and I catch it here, this block is not superficial. You have to throw your blocks as if they are attacks. So when he goes to punch me, this is chopping the you know what out of his radius, okay? And for the inside, the same thing. I'm not blocking this superficially. This is kind of painful, isn't it? It is. It is. And it shocks them and throws them off their game. So again, step one, block it hard and cut. Step two, block it hard and cut and then take your partner to lunch afterward. The next knife technique is delivered from a very powerful stance. It's important that I have a lot of rooting and power in my legs. So when they come up and try to get us into a choke, I wanna have power in the legs and timing for the chokes. So one more time. If they get us in the choke and we can see it coming, we can turn a quarter turn, then we survive and they do not. So watch again. Power in the legs, a quarter turn, the knife's in the chambered position, a couple of plugs, right there, behind, and you'll walk away. We're gonna keep the knife in the chambered position for this movement and use one of the most powerful movements that we have with Chinese martial arts as well as knife fighting, which is the rotation of your body. When Jim's front kick comes at me, he's trying to blow me back and push me off my rooting, maybe knock my air out. 
So when I spin as that front kick comes in, if my timing is correct, I can deflect that energy somewhere else. I'll show you guys again. Front kick comes in, spin through, and his energy went that way, and now I am within knife distance, very close to Jim. Again, it comes in, spin through. From there, the knife comes in on this side. See how it's coming in? This way. Then I immediately rotate the other direction, plug the other side, and walk away. So it's two plugs on both sides. In the Chinese martial we call it liver 13, hitting both sides of the liver meridian. Again, that kick comes in. Spin, deflect it, move yourself in close, plug one, spin plug two, and get yourself out of there. A little faster, watch carefully. Deflect, move in, one, spin two, and get out of there. Lastly, guess what? You messed up, your timing was off. You were too stressed, you didn't practice enough. And they got the choke in, and they're killing you. It's okay, I got a move for you guys. For this attack, the knife's in the open position. I'm gonna do a forehand strike and cut across his body, slashing him. Immediately backhand slash underneath his forearms, which I promise you will loosen that grip up, and you're out of there. Again, the choke is in. Forehand strike to the body, cutting underneath the wrists. Not the elbows, but the underside of the wrist. So watch again. Forward slash, under slash, and then turn and get away. A little faster, slash, underneath, turn. Let's show you guys full speed. Oh, 